Hello and welcome to the Race Hour in association with Bet MGM. And uh, on a weekend, we've seen hen parties come over and have lesser willy packed weekends than this weekend. <laughs> but we are going to be reviewing the Dublin Racing Festival, looking ahead to Cheltenham, and we are joined as ever by Dermot Nolan. Dermot, you were there on Sunday, I believe. How did you enjoy the racing? What was the Leopardstown experience like? Yeah, first of all, great to have you there in the old uh, the old seat there, Cass. The hot seat. You're always always making a play for it. So as I was saying before, and Cass's coup has finally worked out now. And Dean's a gone. New, a new <laughs> epoch has begun. Yeah, yeah, Dean's Dean's reign of terror is over, and your reign of terror now <laughs> begins. And yeah, uh, yeah, no, I was there on Sunday. Uh, a lot of people giving out about the Saturday. Uh, the Sunday was fine. Literally uh, getting a pint or whatever else was absolutely grand. Um, the racing itself was now like the first race was very competitive. Obviously, you were then kind of impressed with Ballyburn, and then it very quickly descended into right when are these three races over with? Now you know State Man, El Fabiolo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, definitely took away from the festival overall. I mean, it's it's a it, like they've nailed it. Leperson have nailed it. To have twenty thousand people going through there on Saturday cast is just that's unbelievable. Um, they've nailed their marketing. They've nailed. All of it barred, they could obviously do with some more facilities now. But again, the more tickets they sell, I'd imagine the more all that will improve as well. But it is the racing is a massive issue and we're sleepwalking into it. You'll see the same lads on Twitter now defending this and saying that it's not Willie's fault. We all know it's not Willie's fault. But to be sat here still now looking on as Willie just absolutely dominated every single race. Like even when the favourite flopped, it was still his outsider winning it. Like, you know, even the mayor's bumper on the last day. The favoured one didn't run well, Aurora Vega, and it was his other one that won it. Um, It's gone too far now. I understand that TDs aren't uh, quite happy. Uh, TDs to our UK audience would be MPs. Uh, they're not overly happy with the money being pumped into Irish racing and that it kind of tends to be coming out around the one, one slash two people. So this is a problem, and I don't know how we sort it, Cass. I really don't. We are also joined by Ronan Groom, journalist with the Irish field. Ronan... You're you're a man with your finger on your pulse. You're in and around race courses frequently. Um, how whelmed were you? Were you overs or unders on the whelm scale with the weekend and how it panned out with the Willie Mullins factor? Well, probably somewhere in the middle with regards to the whole weekend, Stephen. Like um, you the the atmosphere on track was sensational. I really enjoyed that. Um, uh, don't know like my pet peeve going to race courses would be things like getting a drink. And I heard off a few people on Saturday that was a bit of a mission which is never great I remember being at Leopardstown just after the Covid when like, first of the racing festival after that when everyone was back and they had an absolute nightmare that day that Saturday and it turned about okay on the Sunday I think it was a bit like that again on Saturday which is a bit disappointed for people coming over but generally the atmosphere is really good I echo everything else that uh, Pyramid said there though like this is just unsustainable I think we're sleepwalking into a situation where it's just not good at all Obviously, all the caveats of what Willie is doing is absolutely sensational. You can't blame anyone. It's free economics, you know, that all the owners want to go there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not to say, like, if you take, we had 36,000 people at the Dublin Racing Festival this weekend. Like, if you had every Dublin Racing Festival, like what we had there, Willie winning all eight grade ones, you know, really uncompetitive racing in, in this, obviously, statement El Fabiolo and... And the two horse race that was turned into a, a bit of a mess altogether. That just not sustainable going forward. You just won't get thirty six thousand people coming to that every year. So I don't know. HRI don't have a clue what to do. I don't really have much of a suggestion other than to implore owners. I guess maybe it's down to the people that own these horses. You kind of really need to implore them for the good of the game. <laughs> they are probably just say, "Here, it's my money. I'll do what I want." And they'd be obviously well entitled to it, but. For the good of the game, could we start spreading a few more horses around and, and making it a bit more competitive? Because all this willy talk um, is, is, is kind of uh, it's draining now. And, and you well believe with the, the MPs and the people who are criticising racing and they turn on RT racing. And all Literally, Brian Gleeson talking to Willie Munns after every single race and kind of go, what are we doing here? Look, positives and negatives, and I'm sure we'll delve, delve deep into the action. But uh, all in all, yeah, kind of 50-50 on the weekend as a whole. Yeah, yeah, there, there is that feeling and that sentiment and, and there is things can be done. We've spoke about it often on this podcast, things that can be done in terms of uh, restrictions and the programme book, especially as a place you can start very hard to, to restrict trainers, numbers. We all understand that. Um, but the programme book forced them into um, forced them into run against each other more. Uh, there's too many, too many open races, I would say, 
and, and we could filter the start that way anyway. And, and, and a lot of the Christmas races repeating, we could probably do a better job there. But we will talk and about the racing now, how we're going to do it on the pod. We're going to go novice hurdlers, novice chasers, and then open championship races. So starting with the novice hurdlers and, and with a view to the Supreme. Uh, and Ronan, we'll start with you as our guest. Ballyburn, how impressed were you? And how do you think the Supreme market is shaping up now after the weekend? Yeah, pretty impressed. I'd say I'd go odds on he'll end up in the Supreme after this. I just think that this is uh, what Willie looks for in a Supreme horse now. He's a big old cruiser, isn't he? Just the way he goes through his races, his head is kind of dipped down and, and he just wants to go faster than he's actually been let go. And I think he's won this pretty comprehensively, isn't he, really? Um, I know a lot of people will have him earmarked as a as a Ballymore horse or a Barring Bingham horse at the start of the season but I don't know I just looking back at the uh, Willie's winners of the the Deloitte or as it used to be called it used to be over 2-2 and it probably was a bit more of an even spread of what, where he went then but I just kind of went back and looked all 12 of his winners all 11 of his winners and just kind of looked where they went so if you start from the very start you go it's Ballymore Supreme Supreme Ballymore Albert Bartlett Ballymore Supreme 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 Ballymore Supreme so the the four last five winners have gone for the Supreme, and that's basically since the race. The bike went down to two miles, uh, and he just has a look of like appreciated or a classical dream, doesn't he? From the front, um, I could see him going out there making all or being prominent enough in Supreme, and I think he'd be pretty hard to beat. Now, to be honest, really yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think once he once he um made the decision with Champagne Fever. Now that was two two, and Champagne Fever won it. To go back, he seems to think and has made the Supreme a race for stairs. Everyone says it's a race for stairs. I wondered as much that Willie Bullens wins with stairs. But this horse, he's extremely like Classical Dream, I think, with the low head carriage, his way it going. He's just going to bound out and make all. Um, Dear Nolan, what did you think? Are you, th- are you Ballyburn w- will go Supreme? What's your thoughts? Kind of like you, Cass, before, and I didn't believe the hype, really, Um, until then we saw what we saw, and you can't. You can't look at that evidence straight in the face and not just accept that he's very, very good. Um, I love what he did over the first four hurdles as well. His jumping was just so good. He was taking himself up up to the lead. He showed fierce natural pace that I just didn't see in him before that. Uh, it was really, really good. The race itself overall looks very strong as well. Uh, Slade Steele seems to be all the rage now for a Barry Bingham if he goes that way rather than, um, rather than a supreme... They could split up and then behind him on the day as well. I thought Absurd ran a very good race considering he now qualifies for handicap hurdles at the festival. So um, he's one that could be very, very interesting. The one I like as well, uh, just to give a bit of a note there, I was there in the parade ring on Sunday and I saw Paddy Mullins come back in and he was talking away beside me. And he said that any horse that likes good ground had a nightmare at the weekend. They absolutely hated it. And you could see that in that race. Far and Glory dropped out very, very quickly. Uh, he said that Daddy Longlegs went from travelling very smoothly to all of a sudden he was just gone. Now he might just be good enough. But I thought watching a lot of the racing, the the way the handicap hurdle completely tinned out on the Sunday as well. It, it really was a day for tough, tough horses like that. But Cass, with the way uh, global warming is going, it seems to just be winter and summer now. So we're not guaranteed that Cheltenham will, will be any better. So yeah, no, uh, Ballyburn has to go supreme now, I think. And uh He'll take the world of stopping. Six to four, no, 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 bet. I wouldn't thought I'd say that. It, it, it doesn't look too awful a bet, really, does it? Doesn't look too awful. And seven to four with our, our sponsors today, Bet MGM. Um, yeah, to get to get King of Kingsfield, who was actually traveling quite well um, at what would have been the second last off the bridle turning in. So so emphatically, I thought was really impressive. What did um, you think of uh, your Slade Steel? I know you're a big fan of him. I thought that going up to Ballymore, maybe would that be the... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was very much of the view he would have to win this to go supreme. So I was back in a sort of non runner no bet thinking you could have beyond the four to one supreme favorite if he had won. I thought he was emphatically beaten, has to go up and trip, and I think he's now overhyped. I'd be dead against him at four or five to one for the Barry Bigham. I think there's a lot of strength in that race. Um, I love Slade Steel, but everything to me is about price, and no way in hell am I going back in him at four to one or five to one for a bearing Bingham after that. I thought he was comprehensively beaten and on this kind of sticky ground, I, you know, to put a couple of lengths into King of Kingsfield as well within him, uh, I would have said. So, yeah, not getting carried away with him like a lot of people. 
I'd probably look elsewhere now in the Bearing Bingham, which is a race we'll move on to now on the back of the two mile six novice hurdle. The is it the, still the Nathaniel Lacey? I'm not even sure. It is. We it is, it, it, it is. Okay. Shout out to our friends Nathaniel and Lacey. So uh <laughs> and the that, partners as well. <laughs> and, the, and the partners there, yeah, keep keeping the show on the road. Um uh, Dermot, we'll start with you this time. Uh, I, I thought it looked like an, a, a really good race. Um, it seems to be being downplayed. Uh, Predator's goal turned over but ran his race. What did you make of it? I thought Predator's goal was the clear one to take out. I, I thought this was a brilliant Danny Mullins ride. You know, Jatara kicked on. He knew Rachel Blackmore was there on sufferance. He just let it develop in front of him. He, he, he got himself back again, flew home. He just He was on the more straightforward horse. Watching it back, you can see exactly what Paul Townend's talking about as well, that Predator's goal pulls the head off himself. So his performance is actually very, very taking in what he does. I watched a lot of this back last night. I thought the race wasn't a whole pile, but I'd agree with you, I think that there, there is a bit more here. Not that I'd be particularly backing either of them for the likes of, uh, you know, a, a Bering Bingham or an Albert Bartlett, but Predator's goal to me probably backed up why they spent so much money on Caldwell Potter because he's only going to improve going further as well. And Predator's goal really paid a very handsome handsome tribute to him uh dancing city is you know he's actually paid a a, a, a tribute to a, a valley burn because he ran a blinder and a bumper last year behind him um was all the right horses obviously the price is very big retrospectively as it always is the horse i fancied lachlan just ran, well, an absolute horror show of a performance the uh drift said it all he was drifting all morning i i, I had coddled myself that the market just had it wrong but it did not whatever the hell hell was going on there it was absolutely awful so i was I'm back to the drawing board in both the Bering Bingham, Bingham and the Albert Bartlett cast, but um, very impressive. Predator's Gold is the one to take out, but I'm not sure we saw any Channel Festival winners there. Yeah, to somewhat agree. Predator's Gold, I was watching it back there. He, he did throw the head up in the air a little bit now coming up to the line, so I'd be, I'd be, I'd be worried about him. He probably did plenty though to do that though, as in he, he, he's probably just bollocks, was he? As in he you did, know, but he's, he still has to say two five in a bearing Bingham. Uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. He, yeah, I, 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 last night I, I was driving home from the airport. Uh, I was over in Birmingham the weekend. I was thinking, God, Predator's Gold on first watch of the race. I thought he travelled really well into it. Looked like he was going to win this race, and maybe didn't quite stay. But on second watch, I thought there was just a, a touch of a kink in him. So once there's a kink in him, uh, I'm out. Um, yeah, but we, it, depends, we know it depends. Depends. <laughs> depends on the price. Depends on the price. Ronan Groom, in the context of the two races, the Barry Bingham, the Albert Bartlett, uh, Dancing City to go and win a Grade One like that at Leopardstown. He's uh twelve to one in places for the Albert Bartlett. He's ten to one with our sponsors, Bet MGM. What What did you think of the the, the race or or any of the the novice performances in the context of those two races? And where do you see those races lying now? Seeing as we won't be talking to you probably. Too much between now and Cheltenham. You can tell us what you fancy for the the Bearing Bingham and the Albert Bartlett. You won't be talking to me ever again after this, this show. <laughs> I know we most yeah. certainly will. <laughs> I, I um, said, yeah, you can. I I, I thought we should cancel it when Steven, I heard you were Steven's coming on. Already, he's, 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 <laughs> Stephen's calling it already. He's like, no, this is this isn't going to work for us. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Look, I I guess I like I I don't think it's a horrible price dancing city for the Albert Bartlett like. Uh, the, the old Nathaniel Lacey it's it's only kind of a grade one for the last what is it since the Dublin Racing Festival and it's, it's done okay it hasn't produced a winner yet but the likes of you know like a Coon or a Commander Fleet kind of gone and used that as a good platform to run on there he stayed well I was kind of a bit like you Stephen I thought oh, over the last I just thought Predators oh, he's coming to get him here um, and it was maybe a bit of both maybe Dancing City just staying on strong he was talking to Danny Mullins after the race and seemed to think yeah he just really stayed on Probably better near early than he expected after the last and, and kept going and Predator's goal maybe just didn't have an answer to that after pulling a bit freely earlier in the race. I would have thought that Ballymore would be a bit classier now than what Predator's Gold uh, faced there. And I know he's got the two mile grade one form. <clears throat> I haven't finished second to call out Potter, but I'm not sure about that race either. Just the way that all worked out, that was kind of a bit of a mess. Nothing kind of ran well in behind as well. I'd probably be against him. I'd well, how did the two be more positive on Dancing City in what's an open Albert Bartlett? But not, not yeah, I'd kind of be looking elsewhere as well as a bet, but I don't think it's a horrible price, that kind of 10 to 1, 12 to 1. And if I was to, to, to throw a few names at you for the Bearing Bingham, Slade Steel, Mystical Power, could end up going up and trip, reading Tommy Wrong, Ill Atlantique, Gidley Park, Caldwell Potter. Where do you think your your 
shekels might end up like. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Colin Potter now myself. Before even the seven forty went in for him yesterday, so um, I think he could end up there. I as I said, I, I like the grade one form over two miles coming up and trip. Um, one of those kind of subscribers that you need a bit more pace to win a a Bally more. Il Atlantique, I think is okay as well. I'd just be worried about him in the finish. I don't think he's as resolute. Um. As his form suggests, or he just doesn't kind of see out his races, or seems to travel a lot better into his race, and maybe just doesn't see it out. I th do think he's talented as well. Reading Tommy Wrong, I would have thought would go uh, up and trip, go for Adelbert. I think he'd be a player there, uh, but a bit cloudy, and cloudier than usual for this time of year, I suppose. Boat races, I guess. Um, so uh, interesting, yeah. 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 Cloud Cl cloudy is good for punters. There's prices to be had. All the all the apart from. Ballyburn go for the Supreme. The, the novice hurdles look open now. The novice chases look open. We move on to them. Um, it's a good thing for punters, though, Ronan. It's, it's much more interesting. Cheltenham, we, we, we were looking at a prospect of a lot of short price favourites going into Cheltenham now, and two or three of those turned over at the weekend. It's I, I prefer it. What about you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, and just you can get stuck into it now because most of them have run already. It's kind of where they run and you, or where they're going to go, but you, you have a fair idea what's going to go Albert Bartlett, I guess. And it's usually. Usually a race where you can have a crack at the three mile form. I often think is quite underrated. We'll see those races. What's that race coming up now? At um, is it Clamell or, or Clamell and Turles yet to come? Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you the names of the races. Um, but Clamell and Turles are both to come. The race that Alaho would have beaten. Yes. Manella Indo in. Yeah, yeah. And Monkfish would have won on his way to 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 the Albert Bart at the Clamell race. So I think both both those races are are coming up, if I'm correct. I think it's great. It's great, and we should have big fields as well because I think there'll be plenty of um trainers both sides of the Irish Sea will take their chance. We didn't have it on the running order, Dermo, but I'm going to ask you about the over other uh, well, it's not a novice hurdle, but the Triumph Hurdle Market. Um, the Irish came out. A lot of people saying they didn't rate this race. What did you think? Yeah. So apologies, I actually completely missed that out of the the running order for. <laughs> Fair play, Cass. Um, Car Gis was very good, uh, but Jesus, it, it's just hard to see that form getting near Sergino. I thought Majbura was the one to actually take out for a debut run. I thought that was huge effort. Uh, trying to go from the front. That was very much uh, Mark Walsh trying to figure out what he had under him and just said, look, we'll go for it and see, uh, see what happened. I thought the horse hurdled beautifully and I just thought it all got a bit too much for him at the end, but I thought that was completely reasonable for a first time effort. Um, he'd be the one each way that I'd be playing there but Sergino has put away Burdett Road and he's 8-1 to one. I think that that says it all about the market that uh, Sergino's odds on Burdett Road is only 8-1 to one and he's third favourite after being absolutely buried by uh, Sergino so Sergino to me uh, Cass looks very hard to beat I think it's very easy to, to find a few each way values there like Nürburgring or uh, Madsburg etc but it's a uh, it's a division where you'd be looking uh, for an each way angle without necessarily looking to uh, take on the favourite who all of a sudden has really stamped himself on this market, hasn't he? He he has, he has. Now that said, it's going to be the it's going to be the first race on a Gold Cup day. Uh, it's going to be a buzzy market and taking odds on when you're facing down maybe 12 or 14 runners come to the first on a buzzy Friday is going to look a bit different if you ask me. But uh, Rowan and Groom, the triumph hurdle picture after that, a lot of people talked down that um, race at the weekend. I thought it was actually probably a pretty decent race. And I thought almost all of those first five home would be beating um, the likes of a bird at road. So we're going to have the triumph place horses in there anyway. What did you think? I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was as bad as people let on. I guess people were just hoping for that kind of start to come out of it and we'd have like this kind of match up in the triumph, which is probably maybe a bit unrealistic. Like uh, I guess if you were looking at it, you might have looked at Stormheart the way he won first round and think maybe if he went and win by you know ten lengths of leopard's tail, we could have this big face off. And maybe maybe that horse was possibly Salvatore Mundi, and I'm, I presume Cheltenham is probably out for him now. Uh, he missed missed that race, but perhaps it might find the race from somewhere but I'd yeah. imagine Willie, Chelsea... Willie has ran a few he's ran a few first time up in the Triumph so he could yeah, yeah he, could, he could do that yeah I guess yeah. So and I think be there's a race at Ferry House in the next two weeks normally there is a good four year old race yes House, yeah correct right yeah so he yeah. could go with that they could 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 run there and he would be interesting obviously on the form in France previously um, Dearman uh, mentioned them briefly there if I was having a bet on the race now uh, forced to hand I'd go with Nürburgring uh, just on the on the form line there and like he was in between Car Carjizi and um, Carjizi, who I'm, I'm reliably informed is it's it's pronounced that way. I think it's some sort of Indian word. 
Did you hear something? Yeah, yeah I heard Ruby would, just completely dismiss that racing TV. He wouldn't have it. He said, no, no. This horse is now in Ireland. She can be called what we call her. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ronan Groom, that's good Good journalistic work. That's why they pay you the big bucks in the Irish field. That's, that's, that's just uh, earwig, earwigging on the, uh, in the press room. I think Eddie Hislop came in and, and told everyone this is called Karjizi. So uh, yeah. there you go. If I can give you anything, that maybe that's uh, one thing. But anyway... Norbert Gring, um, I like him now. I just, I just thought, um, the way he ran that race at Christmas in between runners, he just got tapped for toe there, didn't he? Thought Cheltenham might be, you know, more of a stamina test that the trip might suit him better. And uh, with that Car Car form now, uh, obviously a Grade One winner, um, that possibly probably twenty to one was a bit big about him each way. I think he definitely goes there. I, I could actually see cutting up now when all the Sergino chat kind of uh, develops and they seem to think obviously he's a bit of a machine he's going to be odds on maybe this turns into like a eight nine runner field and he definitely runs so he, each way he could be uh, could be the way into the race yeah could see that I, I think you're right i think you're right it'll be an eight nine runner field uh but i'd say if willie will still run four or five it's what he tends to do with, with this race um nurburgring of course was was giving weight that day to calaconti and car gc uh that day at christmas uh, I thought Stormheart might improve a lot for the new course. Looks like a big galloping track would suit him. So I'd still be giving him a chance. He's around the 12 to 1 mark. Uh, novice Chasers. And now this is where it gets interesting. Dear Nolan, you are his one of his biggest fans. Uh, what was your verdict on Marine Nacional? I have rewatched this about 20 times. I, I'm still laughing, Cass, at myself, you and uh, David Jennings having an argument about Gaelic Warrior or Marine Nationale, and they were both beaten in separate races quite comfortably. Um, Marine Nationale, Cass, uh, I thought a few things. I thought, first of all, you say that there's a bit of a, a small kink in him. Definitely was the case. He hated the ground. I say his breeding's not all that either. He's had a breeding operation already. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear he's gone for another because watching it first of all I kind of thought that maybe there was a bit too much confidence in the ride that was completely wrong Um, the ride was grand Michael Sullivan never looked happy through, through, through the whole thing but afterwards he was very he didn't want to be making any excuses at all Michael Sullivan you know usually a jockey will reach for something very quickly he really wasn't he just kept saying no no we were beaten he looked very disappointed Um, I don't think that's his true running but all of a sudden there's just serious question marks over what this horse has has actually done over the years now because the the two mile hurdlers from last season don't look a whole pile really all of a sudden do they bar Illite yeah, Tom's yeah, but yeah you know so like bar him um so you have to just kind of lightly question what he's done I do think he's an awful lot better than that I just think that he cut out too quickly again all you heard from jockeys over the weekend was that the ground was much worse than they all thought it was going into it and uh, so I don't think he lifted himself off it. I think he hated it. He he's always been a very much good ground horse, but Christmas belies that though, as in he flew around at Christmas time on on similar ground. So I am scratching my head. Royal Bond on possibly heavy ground without on heavy ground. Yeah, exactly. So So don't give me that shit. Exactly. So you're just scratching your head with him, um, and it more than likely is the case, Cass, that he's just another horse who's just not as good as we thought he was, probably. Yeah, I think maybe another horse that's come up with a problem more than that than he was that good in the Supreme, but has has come up with a physical issue. Ronan, you were on the ground. What 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 were you hearing? What was the the talk on the ground? Any insights? Was there any physical issues talked about? The breathing der- dermo mentioned there looked an issue to me anyway. Uh, I, I think so. I'm, I'm not, nothing official or nothing from the actual camp. I didn't hear anything, but just from chatting people around the parade ring and stuff. I, Better horse judges than me just thought he was in distress, you know, coming in, kind of cocked his head up in the air a bit and was kind of just gurgling for it or like looking for a bit of, you know, if it is a wind issue, that would make sense, you know, and I wouldn't be a big fan of a, a double wind up or going back again. Um, I'd say he's in trouble now, to be honest. Um, I've heard, I, this, I, I, I thought I, he showed a little signs of that at Christmas. I know this is a bit after timing on it, but I wasn't keen him at all as as, as regular listeners. So, no, at the weekend, because I, I, I thought he was... His head carriage at Christmas was really bad. You don't see really good horse over jumps foaming at the mouth crossing the line. And he was at Christmas, which suggests he was struggling with his mouth, which suggests he was struggling to breathe. Yeah, I just like, and I'm surprised he's still tight enough at the top of the market. Like, I mean, could you be back in that for an Arco? Now, I think the Arco's got, gone wide open now, to be honest. I think it could be a bit like that year when... Um, Duke de Geneva won. Um, <laughs> Duke de Geneva, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. Jesus, yeah. I'll give you a fiver if you can name who went off favourite that year. 
uh, would it have been notebook? No, you're on the right. You're on the right owners. The right owners. Uh, grey horse. No, petty mouchoir. No, no. Okay. Petty mouchoir. Yeah, I've had two guesses. Well, notebook was the more. shout out. Notebook was the shout out. Huh? He won I a did. great down in the. He won a great one on a great one on him down in Limerick on Saint Stephen. Oh, hardline, hardline. Yes. Is it? Correct. Oh, yes. Yeah. So yeah, I think it could be. That. I think it could be that type of article, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't know he would not favour that. You're just gas. Do- dodging bullet style article, maybe. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. And, um, and any but... any views on it? Or, or, uh, take stock I think it's like, like I, I, I do think the, the winners could be slightly underrated. <laughs> not more so than Willie Mullins, who who tends to... I just think, think it's mad uh, listening to Willie after race. I don't know if either you caught uh, Willie's interview with Lydia, because I was just listening, getting my own quotes off uh, Lydia there. But sometimes Racing TV don't put out these... Uh, pieces if they're too busy or whatever so uh, I don't know if you caught it but Liddy was obviously asking Willie about Lette Tomp and all he wanted to talk about was um, was 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 Facile Vega in third like, like the love he has for, for Facile Vega is just I find it very strange and like he ran okay Facile Vega but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be very positive on going forward I think he needs that sort of ground and he probably saw the best of their back on quick ground in Shelton I'm not sure about him at all and I just a bit of a it's uh, it's kind of like Willie seems to get these horses where he he, he is a mission horse for him or it's his own cliff horse and I'm not sure um we'll ever get to see that the kind of what he sees at home or, or what he wants he's dying to prove to everyone but um it's just it's just interesting if you own Dilla Tate. He was saying, I remember with Ramillies as well he absolutely loved that horse yeah. he used to go on and on and on about him and he'd horse it Dutton like <laughs> yeah yeah but like I wonder if you if you owned Dilla Tate Tomp and this is the second time this has happened because it happened last year at the Dublin Race the Festival I remember when. When when and when off the quick, he was out to criticize town and trade away. No talk about the actual winner of the race. If you own them, it's like it's yeah. like it's, Willie has this weird autonomy of power that he can just basically do and say what he wants about horses. But this is this earth. is just after Ronan at Christmas time, where his Willie's son told another jockey not to be going up the inside on that horse again yeah. in a Grade One. Like yeah. it's it's very odd. Like I mean, those yeah. owners must be looking on going. I don't know what's going on here, but again, they, they won't to, and they, they should be more careful with their language. Just in, like, maybe we all know what goes on, etc. But like, the way they talk about races like that, and Willie especially, I don't know. I just, I just, I, I just put myself in the shoes of the owners of Illite Tomp, and all you've been asked, you're, you, you given like tr- Lydia, like literally asked them three times about the winner, and he went back to Fasal Vega. Just oh, but Fasal Vega, you know, back in Cheltenham, he's got the know how around Cheltenham and all. That's strange, but anyway, a wide open article, and uh, yeah, I t- tend to take the winner as a bit underrated. So Ronan Groom calls for the syndicate owned Illete Tomp owners to make a power move and take the horse out of Willie Mullins. Yeah, uh, for the good of the protest. game. This, yeah, for the good of the game. Made. Move it to <laughs> Nichols. Move it to Nichols. Down to Rotwell here in Wicklow. Down to Rotwell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Having his best season ever. All's going well. Uh, he's, a, he's a man that can't complain at the moment. Okay, so and uh, the, the next, uh, as we jump up the trips and the divisions with the Novice Chasers, the Turner's market, another market blown wide open. Ronan, we'll stay with you. Um, you were there. Gaelic Warrior was acting up. He's done it before, uh, I believe. Um, what did you make of it, and what did you make of Factor File in light of that with the Turners and Brown Advisory picture? Uh, I wasn't actually there, Stephen, but I was watching uh, closely on on television. Um, I heard I heard different things about Gaelic Warrior in the ring. Some people seem to think it wasn't that big of a deal. Other people are saying he was a bit lively. Um. The race was just bonkers, wasn't it? This went from the best, possibly the best novice chase we were going to have all season to the worst, literally. Like on the, I, I tweeted out earlier that morning, a tweet that will probably never be, uh, would be right up there for aged badly uh, category because I, I quite like that natural look in the first. Uh, she was beaten after about <laughs> halfway through, and then had suggested in the same tweet that this race could be the best race of the season or the best novice chase, and it was just a shocker, really. Like Gaelic Warrior, I don't know. Like he, Willie seemed to think he was beaten after something happened at the fifth last or the sixth last, and Paul kind of had accepted it from there. And then, in fact, the file has obviously just gone and won as he did. I don't know what you can make of the form now. Is there going to be a favourite ever at the Gentleman Festival with as soft as form as fact of file for all that he's yeah, done? Yeah. I like the way he's done it, but like he's beaten Zana here and a Manila Cocooner who just basically wasn't at the race his first time out. Zana here is no more a chaser than me or you. And, um, this is he basically had a run around Leopard Stamp because Gaelic Warrior is just a non event here, it's just a non entity. And I can't imagine he'll even go to Shotgun now. Is there, there's a shotgun one for me to be honest, Andy Post, because I backed Gaelic Warrior Turners and Fact Defiled Brown Advisory 
And now it's looking like the Turners is a very live thing for for fact of file and Gaelic Warrior probably won't run at all. I'd imagine they'd go Fairy House, wouldn't they now? Uh, it's it, it's uh, Willow Warm yeah, or the yeah. Old Powers Gold Cup. Old, is it have. called the Ryanair Gold Cup now or something? Or what's it Willow called? Warm, the, the I think old, it's called, yeah. Like Willow, um, Willow Warm. Good big shout yeah. out to our good friends in Willow Warm there. The good yeah. people. The good uh, people at Willow Warm. Yeah, keeping <laughs> our heads so warm. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but, yeah, like that, that it's, Fairy House is quite close to Cheltenham this year, so maybe that wasn't even an option for them as well. So, uh, I'd imagine, yeah. Well, fact to file, Dermot certainly kept Willie warm, uh, over the weekend, <laughs> winning winning a, yet another grade one. What did you think of it? Were you as impressed with fact to file as our good friend Dean Ryan? Uh, you can't possibly be that, no, but I thought he was very good. Uh, like, I, I did like what he did, I liked when he just loomed up beside Gaelic, he just Gaelic was gone all of a sudden, you know, like he. Uh, what he did himself was very impressive but I completely agree with Ronan it's very hard to tell what he's actually done but this race as well as tinned out all of a sudden I mean they found a 50 goes to the Arkle Ile Francais is not going Ginny's Destiny will go Gaelic Warrior is probably not going Fasal Vega might go up and trip Ile Day Tom's probably going to Arkle this race com- completely falls apart again so like if there is an each way angle there Cass you might inform us uh, because you might know one there because I, I, I've been struggling all morning trying to I was really trying to find a wise guy price here and come in with a 25 to 1 shot, but I mean, like, Nella Cocooner is only 33 to 1 for this, which kind of says it all, really. Um, it's a completely wide open race. It's not one that I'm massively keen to kind of get involved in. I think he'll be hard beaten. I think what he's done is very good. But as Ronan said, I can't can't disagree at all with it. It's just very hard to put any substance on what he's, do- on what he's done. But the likely second favourite, Jimmy's Destiny, that horse has been doing it in handicap company as well. So it's very hard to ascertain what... What Ginny's destiny has done, so it's well, a very... well. You know what, just Ginny's destiny's doing. He's he's probably you know going to run somewhere in the one fifties around Cheltenham on yeah. the Wednesday. So that 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 that's what you have to beat. But Factofile has done absolutely nothing. I would say to even suggest he's ran anywhere near that yet. I I I would say Gaelic Warrior. He ran Gaelic... to the one fifty at Saturday. Well, you can you can't put a number. I think on Sunday he's, because Gaelic. Yeah. Gaelic Warrior was jumping him into the ground for the first few fences. Then, uh, but she's as... at the track though. How how far right uh, Gaelic Warrior went to the first two was mental. Yeah, 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 yeah. And but but he it was very unusual in that he had a lead and all of a sudden turning into the back, Factofile was in front, which would suggest that the way Gaelic Warrior travels powerfully, all wasn't well. Oh, I don't know. Then... He got uh, looking at Twitter today. He's he was back out of working today and they couldn't find anything clear. Yes. Well, I'd be all. strongly of the view he didn't give remotely his running and therefore Factofile basically had a gallop around I think and then you're taking 6-4 to four, I think he jumped right and he threw a strop then when it wasn't going well for him I thought Mark yeah. Walsh sat off him happy enough that he was going so far right that Mark Walsh didn't even need to be challenging jumping wise he was just going to let him let him hang himself uh, yeah. and find a crude saying uh, I, just think it's a, I think Factofile is an atrocious price is my point yes. to you based yeah, on what he's it. done like two, two races yeah. that have completely fell apart who would you uh, be looking at there though American. Uh, well, I'd be very much up to you. I've said it before. American Mike, when he's fresh, is a really, really good horse. Uh, he he hammered Factofile. Was it Factofile or Corbett's Cross? Sorry, I mix up the two. Factofile, Factofile, yeah. Factofile. Yeah, hammered him in a beginner's chase. And and while I actually had a good bet them 16 to 1 anti post three places at the weekend and wasn't too happy to see him <laughs> taken out, uh, if they keep him fresh, and I, genuinely now, I mean, if they don't run him between now and Cheltenham, uh, I think 25s for the Turners, which would be his trip. And, and and it's there non runner no bet. Uh, I think American Mike Fresh is a very good horse. He travelled really well into the the Bearing Bingham last year. He'd be one I'd be interested in, and is a likely runner. Uh, and like you say, there mightn't be that big a field, but I suppose they'll all take their chance in the end because, uh, yeah, yeah, so you know, Factofile yeah. is such a weak weak favourite at the price. For all that, he could be very good. Um, a very good. Just to give one shout out as well, Cass. I met one of our listeners, uh, Jack Dempsey, at the race course, who told me that he must be one of the first people ever to. Absolutely unload on a horse in a two-runner race and not even finish second. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, said I had to give a shout out for that. At one, least yeah. he got a run for his money. Good for you, Jack. <laughs> Hello, Jack, and all all the all the listeners that came out. You had a few come up to you at the weekend, Dermo, had you? A few, yeah, everyone and Dial, a few more, yeah. No, right all there. like Ryan Tuberty going around the place. <laughs> <laughs> all all good people, Cass, as uh, as we always knew. All the race our listeners, they're all good people. Yeah, and, and I don't know if it's worth talking about the Brown Advisory, but it's on our running order, I suppose, in the context of this. Uh, the whole picture looks shady now. Ronan, um, seeing as you're never coming on again, we've confirmed that. <laughs> what do you think about the Brown Advisory picture now at the moment? Like, I've, I've 
the save factor file is still going here. Like uh, it seems like the only person who has any sort of autonomy or power over Willie or can tell him what to do is is, is the great man uh, with the green and gold and, and Frank Berry. So perhaps back to file they might still want to run him here, but depending on what they want to do with Corbett Cross, there's obviously due to run in the two and a half uh, the city Isles there, and Emmett seems to be talking to Emmett at the start of the season seems to think that two and a half miles is kind of where they hopefully end up with him kind of utilizing both the, the speed and stamina aspects there, but who knows, he could go anywhere. No one, no one. He didn't stay at Christmas, though, did he? He just didn't stay blatantly, I thought, at Christmas time. Yeah, so I would have thought the two and a half mile might be a better option for him, and I could see, um, I could see that happening. Like, Revenge Car West, you, you obviously have to take into account as well, just obviously disappointing he didn't run. Hopefully he's okay. Like, I think stay away Faye, probably. Because we're on to a fair standard so far. I'm a big fan, obviously, of the Albert Bartlett winner kind of coming back for the Brown Advisory. I think that's a pretty solid form line, um, generally speaking, uh, and obviously did quite well the last day um, out, of, out in open company. I would have thought he'd be maybe a little bit closer to favours or that sort of thing. I do, like, fact, fact of file is a, is a atrocious price on form, but the vibes, I guess, you have to just account for what the vibes are from the camp. And just being there after he won at Christmas... It's just I don't know how do you, how do you price up a feeling or a vibe or something you probably can't and you probably you know it's straight to the poorhouse if you're going to do that for your consistently but just you have to uh, kind of um, account for the feeling from the camp and it just seemed got the vibe off Willie Mullins that they really really liked this fella it took ages for us for him to come over to us after that that Christmas that win over Christmas you know, kind of debriefing with JP and, and Frank and uh, they're all there and just you know just got the feeling that there's a there's a lot of hope behind them so. Uh, yeah, very interesting race, but stay away Faye would be the one for me at the moment that the prices might be a tiny bit underrated. Very good. Okay, Dermo, we know you are you like yeah, Monty Star, yeah, yeah. so we, we, we won't bother going keep through Keep on trucking, yeah, keep on trucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, El Fabiolo, mighty uh, impressive, hugely impressive. What an engine on the horse. Um, we'll move on to the open division staying. Uh, we'll talk about the champion chase quickly and the Gold Cup. Um, El Fabiolo, with the shape of the race now, and El Fabiolo going to be so strong and so few runners, could we... Could you give John Bon any little squeak, maybe dirty each way bet or anything like that, Ronan? Well, it wouldn't be my style now, to be honest, uh, uh, Stephen. I, I do like John Bon, and I was kind of pro, more pro him than probably most people are at the start of the season. I thought good ground or better ground might just suit him as opposed to last year's Arca, which was a bit softer. Um, I just couldn't. I, he let me down the last day, I think, just jumping like that. Has a lot of questions to answer now. El Fabiolo was just a brute, isn't he? Well, I used to kind of think, I used to. Look, El Fabio and goes one of these days. This mistake is going to get him. It's going to it's going to stop him or something. But he seems to be able to just make these mistakes and get through it, which is quite unusual for a two miler. But uh, he just doesn't jump as well as, as the best will do. But he can he can survive a mistake if he has to. And how do you actually jump much better than he did a cork, uh, which was like kind of my alarm bells are ringing for him after cork. I thought he was stickier than usual there on his comeback, and Phil Dore got quite close to him as a result. But um, Jump much better there. The Dino Blue, you know, shouldn't sleep on that form. She's been pretty progressive this season as well, and absolutely couldn't get near him. So definitely the one to beat. Yeah, he's like a snow, yeah, so snow plow so driving so through this stuff. Uh, Dermo, you haven't had an El Fabiolo, or we move on? No, no, I just actually love the fact, Cass, that he's he's learned how to make mistakes so well that he doesn't need to fix his jumping at all. He just handles hitting a fence. He belts a fence, and it just doesn't take a scratch off him. It's a phenomenal way of getting around because usually you would say with him I'd like to take him on because he's you know he will make a mistake just doesn't knock a feather off him he's learned how to find a leg very very easily he, he made a few bad jumps at the weekend again and he just finds a leg so so simply that yeah he's a horse he's he's relatively brown proof really Cass yeah I suppose the only thing is he's, he's probably due it's one of these racing uh, these things become uh, common parlance in racing Marine Nacional is going to be the next arc Paul Town had always managed to pick the right ones these things are always blown out of the water <laughs> yeah. so at yeah, Chelsea, the, the Paul Ta- that Paul Town and right uh, race one needs to go away now anyway definitely yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that was kind of due due do a change um, we said about could John Bond be the greatest dirty each way bet of all time he certainly won't be because State Man looks to be that uh, I, I cannot believe you can still back this horse at 7-2 to two with three places um, Ronan Groom I don't want to hear this will close your account that's nonsense get down to the shops and have as much on as you can would that be the, the, the that would be the safest responsible gambling message wouldn't it you have to gamble yeah. responsibly and put on one of the best bets you will ever see in your life 
Yeah, why not? And then have your picture taken in that shop forevermore, and uh, you'll probably never be able to walk in there ever again. But uh, yeah, uh, look, God, and you know, like the and people will say, oh, the the each way part of it, yeah, you, the, your your overall money place wise there. But is the win part of life here, lads, or am I touching that straws? Hundred percent alive, isn't it? Hundred percent like, alive. You have a I horse mean, coming coming from the back of a a slight setback. A horse who jumped so low he could make a mistake. I put it this way, Ronan. If 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 Constitution had made one bad mistake to cost him four lengths, it's even money each or two, isn't it? No. That's that's a fair way of looking at it, yeah. And 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 he has had a apparently has had a, a bad scope or whatever. Um whether how, how how much credence we give that, um, or that's just a part of Nikki's kind of playbook for for not running, whatever, but God, if there was one result, like bending aside, if there's one re- result at a Cheltenham festival that I'd love to see, I'm probably going to go at Kevin Keegan here, but I'd love to just if Stateman beat Constitution <laughs> Hill, that would one, be... One for the little guy there with Willie Mullins winning the I Chapman know, Hardy I know, I know that sounds mad, but like <laughs> Stateman, you'd just love to own him, wouldn't you? Like, ah, what a fabulous horse. Absolute pro. And has ran, like shows up to every gig and runs his race and is just rock solid. Whereas, and, and this, isn't it sad to be like kind of feel like you, you're against Constitution Hill. It has nothing to do with the horse at all. It's just the way he's been campaigned by his uh, owner and trainer this year. It's actually just, I don't know how you feel about this, lads, but just very disappointing to me. I just think it's really frustrating to watch. And you nearly want horses to beat him now, or, or a horse like Stateman has been the polar opposite, you know, just shows up to every gig and does what he does. So I'd love to see it now. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see it as well. I think, I think the thing with Nicky is the fact he says he's going to do one thing and then does the other is more annoying. Willie, Willie would tend not to do that, and I'm not a, a huge Willie fanboy at all. Um, Dermo, are you giving Statement any chance in hell of, of turning over Constitution Hill? Uh, if X, Y, or Z happens on the Tuesday, I was reading Race IQ the last day, and you know, his, his jumping still hasn't improved enough to match the lengths that Constitution Hill takes out of him at the hurdles. I personally think Constitution Hill needs to make more than one mistake, like you mentioned there, to, uh, to be even both of them. Just the ease in which he swatted him away last year. But I love the simplicity in which State Man hammers home in these races. It's just a brilliant, brilliant racehorse. And uh, State Man is, uh, he's excellent, but yeah, it's just. It's unfortunate, really, that he's bumping into such a brilliant, brilliant racehorse. But as uh, Ronan said, for the sport overall, you would leave this. love love to see him win, just like you would uh, the Gallop and the Champs as well, because it should bury the whole thought that these horses need to be minded. Run them, run them, run them, and, and see what happens. Did Did and, you see, uh, sorry, could you see, did you see uh, Lit- Willie had a little go at Nicky um, on ITV race? Yeah. It was brilliant, wasn't that? Right? And and then he said, and then he kind of tried to clear it up a bit and go, oh well, you know, Nicky's a great man for getting ready on the big day, which kind of didn't really gave more credence <laughs> to what he said before. It didn't oh, no, but he said, yeah, no, uh, we have to run them. You, you know, you have to run them. And Paul Nichols had a similar pop a few weeks ago as well, um, yeah. because I think the most the most damaging aspect of what Nicky does isn't what he does with the horses. He can do whatever he wants with them. We all know damn well that what happened to to. Altior against surname is what has led to all of this nonsense mm. is Altior was damaged that day and he's been careful with them all since. Um, but the most dangerous thing that he keeps talking about that he's doing this on safety grounds. And that's, I think that's what's annoying the Willie Mullinses and the Paul Nichols that that's not a good look at all for racing when they're talking about not running a horse on safety grounds is you may as well switch the lights off. <laughs> if that's the rhetoric that, you know, one of our greatest trainer is saying. Uh, and and uh, the other open chase division to talk about, Dermo, is the Gold Cup. Um, what did you make of that race? I don't think it was as straightforward an, an analysis as a lot of people are given. Mm. Um, I heard Johnny Deneen and Paul Keeley saying that, I think it was Keeley, maybe it was Matt Williams uh, with, with, with Geno on a show, saying that they think that Fast or Slow could turn them over in the Gold Cup. Um, the Gold Cup was still the Gold Cup. There's a lot of running to be done. Over three mile two around Cheltenham, is it done and dusted in your mind? I don't see how fast or slow turns turns that form around. He out jumped them the whole way around. He, I thought JJ Slevin matched it. Uh, the only grounds would it be that fast or slow takes him on a bit further out? Maybe is that what they're they're thinking could kind of turn that round? But he out jumped them. I mean, again, looking at race IQ, they had the the full fence defense done up and. Um, he out jumped them the vast majority of defenses and he still couldn't beat them. There was a relevant, there was a bit of kind of ease in which Gallopin went away in the end. I don't think Cass 
I don't personally feel that uh, fast or slow is the one that's going to beat him in a Gold Cup. Obviously, if he underperforms, like you just said there, if Constitution Hill makes an error, that brings a statement into it. If Galvin makes an error, but Galvin has made errors and he's still beating these horses. He's he's not jumping as well. He kind of, every second day, seems to put in a serious jumping performance and then kind of goes back into real safe jumping. My angle on the race, which I will be saying now <laughs> for the rest of the season, is I think there's one angle to beating Galvin des Champs. I think it revolves around... Uh, Brave Man's game and Faster Slow rightfully believing that they can win this race and having a cut at him from three out, two out. And I just think that he he could hold them off just like Bob's work in Sylvania Conti back then. And it's something like Lord, uh, a Lord Windermere arrives after the last when the horse has, you know, has won his race twice already and might hold them off. I think Nassalam is an absolutely huge price in the Gold Cup. Um, I actually shared this on, on the group the last day. Got it from Steve Jones on Twitter. But the... The last five horses to win a Welsh Grand National off 11 stone, six or more is Elegant Escape, uh, Nater River, Caravels Hill, uh, Synchronised, and then there was one other. But basically it was three Gold Cup winners and one horse that should have won a Gold Cup. Now Elegant Escape obviously didn't turn out to be a Gold Cup horse, but what he did that day was monstrous. And there's just an angle in my head that, that I just see um, I see him fighting off faster than Brave Man's game and a Nassalam just arriving over the top. And just, you know, not being able to repel a horse like that who probably couldn't go to pace with them early on. That's the only angle I see left, Cass. I think he is beatable, as brilliant as he is, but I don't think it's fast or slow. I I, I found that analysis very strange because I don't see what JJ Slevin and Martin Brazel can change now that can actually win uh, win that race. Very good. Uh, Naslam. You just have to say Naslam now, Dermo, if we've three months. So how many weeks? Are we five weeks to go? We five don't need five to... weeks at least. It's all. You've, it's all, all you've like... done it now. You've done your whole analysis of what's going to win the World Gold Cup. We just wanted <laughs> to know where you're for against Gallup and Deschamps. But that's it. Naslam. We can play that back, Cameron. Clip that bit in and we don't have to go through that every time we're on the podcast between now and like the Friday. Back in the day, remember you lost yeah, it one. Yeah, oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. How many times could I have listened to the case for Pat's fancy for the four mile? And it's ours. 250 to 1 on Betfair or something at the time. Gallup and Deschamps is odds on with all books uh, Ronan Groom uh, would you be a player or a layer? No, I'd be a layer uh, Steve at that price Jeez, uh, odds on now for the Gold Cup you couldn't touch it really could you I don't even think it'd be that sort of price on the day he might just come back out to a, a relatively decent price the other side of even money I'd imagine um, look, it's just hard to win Gold Cups like, I, know, I know it's one Leopard Sound is one thing and he does look back to his best now and I echo what Dearman said like I think you're getting fast or slow out jumping him there I think well, down the race IQ data, uh, the race IQ data, the, this length gain jumping, it's like the new XG of uh, <laughs> yeah, it really of is, pace, yeah. isn't it? So, so Gallop, they had Galvin and Deschamps down minus 3.14 and faster slow 8.19. So, like, that's a difference, obviously. The level. Like, yeah, Gallop and Deschamps was still able to put them to the sword there. And, and albeit a steadily run race, um, obviously, the, the race got kind of screwed up a bit when Conflated didn't go on. Um, I don't know. Yeah, just gold cups are hard to win, as I say. I'm probably looking at a couple. Uh, Carrick Rambler is on my shortlist. I might as well put put, put these up now when uh, I guess I won't be back on again. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you will be back on. <laughs> Lower cast got this from you. Will. <laughs> Uh, I just so felt like, threatened I there. Know. I felt threatened. I'm normally on tipping uh, Ronan, so I felt threatened that there was someone else, you know, in that chair. So because I'll be off this chair now soon enough, so I need, you know, I need to. I need to mind my own backyard. I might, I might uh, just throw up anything now here and give all my dodgy racing views that, you know, I'll have you down for defamation or everything now while I can. <laughs> but uh, sorry, Ambler, uh, I, if, if, if they believe, if I, I kind of just want to listen to Russ have a bit more belief in them because they're talking about this as a trial run, but I presume he'd be going there uh, in, in, in decent shape. I didn't I in my faster slow as well. Uh, and gentleman's game, uh, mouse with a good horse. I always like it, Tottenham. Um, and kind of he's decided to miss, obviously, uh, Irish Gold Cup go straight there. Obviously, on the form, he has plenty to to still get to, but he has the right type of profile for the race. And which I'm just a sticker for in the Gold Cup. I think you need this type of seven year old second season horse. And for that reason, I kind of be willing to take on Gallop and Michon still very yeah. down to the unique test that is the Gold Cup. Yeah, and he's had four hard races since winning the Gold Cup uh, last year as well, which he uh, got three hard races this year and, and kind of in quick succession, bang, 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 uh, Gallop and Deschamps. So he'll, he'll have that to overcome as well. 
Um, as we wind down the podcast, we get to Notebook Horses for the festival. Uh, while you think about that, Ronan, Dermot Nolan, anything go into your notebooks, maybe even for the handicaps at the Children Festival? Yeah, on better ground, um, I thought Magical Zoe will take an awful lot of stopping potentially in a county hurdle. I thought the ground just got her jumping the last. It was heartbreaking watching her. I was all over him when she jumped the last and you could just see Darrell Keefe just getting there, getting there, getting there. I thought this was a lovely performance. The front, the second, third and fourth actually all ran very well. So Scottish as well handicapped as he seems to be, never quite gets the job done. Um, but Zenta and Magical Zoe both travelled like an absolute dream, both of them. Uh, Magical Zoe obviously representing the Irish point form this season as well. So she's one that if she can manage to get better ground, and I wouldn't be adverse to maybe booking the likes of uh, Mike O'Connor, the old course at Cheltenham with how well she travels, the county hurdle would just, I think, suit her down to the absolute ground at 25 to 1. And then the one of the most unlucky horses the whole weekend. I know Hartwood won that handicap chase on the Sunday really well. But first of all, Legolias, or how do you say that name again? Percival? Yeah, Legalois, I would say. Yeah. Legalois, sorry, that's it. Um, I thought that was, <laughs> he was coming to win. It was a monstrous performance. Poor old Connor Stone Walsh. That's the second time for Cromwell now, hitting the last um, but he could be one for something like an Ultima um, where him and Panda Boy also advertise his credentials. But he's another horse that never never quite gets the job done. So Percival... Um, <laughs> Legalois. Dermot, Dur- Dur- you've disgraced yourself twice there now with the pronunciation and by saying that the county hurdle is run on the old course. Which course it's on? Sorry, the sorry. Course. No, I, I did that the last... <laughs> with the, old, with the, new, the new course, sorry. Uh, so sorry. So the uh, new course was suited for great because again, there's... Very few hurdles there in the last few furlongs, so she'd be suited there. But um, yeah, they're the two. Yeah, yeah very good, very That's good. Ronan, and, Ronan, and any notebook horses, Anthony, for the handicaps that uh, Carl yeah. Troy? Yeah, a few. Um, just very good, very quickly. I like Zenta in the way she ran. I think she got the scope to progress again. I'm not a massive fan of back in five year olds and I don't know any kind of open company or, or like basically against older horses, but she looks like she had a lot more to. If I like Willie Mullins obviously running horses at the county hurdle, not over further like the Carl Cup and that sort of stuff. Um, but I'm obviously got a much better record in the county. She's one for two in Ireland, could be interesting. Uh, absurd doesn't have a rating, they didn't give him a rating yesterday. Um, so I'm not sure what he could possibly go for, but I was kind of, I think you mentioned him Dermot there earlier. I thought he ran okay. But I'm not there, Mark Pipe, kind of that was a real gallop and they shot type ride, wasn't it? That that. That to yeah. me now looked to scream to me as remember when Mikey Fogarty rode him into a, 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 nearly a place. Brian Hayes did something similar. Yeah, he could be a Martin Pipe horse. Yeah, yeah. So that's what, that's what kind of what I was thinking as well. And he's a monster rating, obviously on the flat. He's one ten. Uh, obviously that doesn't always transfer over, but it's obviously he's got some level of ability to be one ten on the flat. And if he can get close to or even be seventy five percent of that over hurdles, it could be interesting one. And the other one was Good Time Johnny. Um, bit of money for him now. Maybe the it's starting to come a bit warm again. Uh, after you know, obviously, just a couple of runs around earlier on in the season, and he basically probably ran as good, if not better, than he did uh, at the Dublin race of the last season. And obviously, came good at Cheltenham. Then maybe the Kim Muir would that be? Would he get that type of rating? Get there and get a good Irish amateur up on him. I thought he could be interesting. Like that, that was one of the best rides of the weekend. I thought how Enright got him around even was. He he hit about five or six of them very hard. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he's he's, right. he's yeah. jumping yeah. is an amazing, obviously. Uh, yeah. Not had those examples, but, uh, he ran okay in the circumstances. He might be might be one of the type to improve, I suppose. So uh, interesting to see what he ends up. I, I'd be loath to back any of these now, to be honest. Before handicap ratings come out, but, yeah, uh, these would be kind of on the on the short list. Uh, you'd be half mad to be back in the handicaps anyway, until all, almost on the day with the extra places at the way the markets are in the morning off. Um, unless you really have an angle, and I'm going to throw one last curveball at you that that wasn't on the running order, but the Grand National weights came out today. Do either of you have a fancy, a long term fancy for the Grand National? Yes. Oh, the way it's the entry. Sorry, Ronan, hands up there quickly. Yes. What? What? Yeah. Make Make a case for one. I'm a, I'm a very big fan, and I was I was keen to see how he went yesterday in the sale, but Chemical Energy, I just think, has got a big one in him. I think he's well handicapped off. The uh, back of the national hunt race last season. I thought he was kind of unlucky there, just the way things fell for him. And since that, he's just wants a decent surface, doesn't he? And they pulled out of the Paddy Power there, Christmas, because it went soft. Just holding on to him, I'm pretty sure they think he's very well handicapped and uh, don't want to waste it on, on running on soft ground or whatever and running running okay and possibly going up a few pounds, whatever. 
They uh, ran well in the Kerry National again, but I think you know the ground probably against them that day as well. Going back to Cheltenham, possibly, but maybe they save him for the big one. Um, I think was it Jigginstown ended up with him. No, he no, actually well, he, he, he's in the. I can't think of their names. The American Mike Colors. He's in those. Oh, yeah. Yes, Bechtel's, yeah. yeah. No, so he, he, he's in those colours on the racing post, um, Grand National. Right. So, it was Eddie O'Leary who bought, who bought, bought him, I think, what it could have been for, he buys for um, for Bechtel as well. So, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So, no, Gordon obviously quite, obviously keen to keep a lot of them, but just stuck up a tweet last night for 200,000 or 215, he seemed like, obviously, in a mad world that is National Hunt, you know, buying National Hunt horses is, is, is madness. But that seemed to me like the best value you're getting there. A, a rock solid national horse there at least get you to the big day and he'd be the one I'd be looking at you back to him at 66s or something for the national very good Dermot Nolan answer for the national Malarition Cass again I don't need to uh, go on too much he's a horse that broke our hearts in this podcast but oh, I think uh, the way he went through that race was one very uh, reminiscent to me of a horse that would handle Aintree quite well that he just would you know uh, Thomas along he might have had the finishing kick of uh, that's alright Gino but uh, he might need to over four miles plus, so I think he's uh, he's one I like for definitely. Very good. Okay, that wraps up. Uh, and thank you very much, especially to Ronan Groom for coming on, joining us the Irish field. First of many visits he's going to have. And <laughs> dear but Nolan, thank you as always. And we will see you on Thursday to preview the weekend. Uh, with myself, dear but Nolan, and who's on Dermo? On Thursday, Paddy Aspel. Paddy Aspel. Paddy Aspel. Great. Of the most admirable chasers you could possibly wish to see. 